I don't normally even watch television. But one Saturday morning, I woke up early and the TV was on in my living room. So I sat down and there was a show called The Last Heart Attack. It was about essentially a heart attack proof diet. Now, I don't have any risk factors, or I didn't have any risk factors, I still don't, for heart disease, but that caught my attention. I was aware that heart disease is the number one killer in America, both for men and for women. I thought, heart attack proof diet? You mean we could just eat differently and have no heart disease? You've got to be kidding. So I watched the, it was actually a preview for a show. And so I watched it and I, I was intrigued. I thought it was a bit crazy. They were talking about essentially plant-based diet. And I thought, this is, this sounds strange. But you know what got my attention? They were talking about the fact that eating this way would not just reduce your chances of getting most forms of heart disease, but actually eliminate your chance of getting the most common forms of heart disease, the type that kills the most people. Eliminate your chances. That really caught my attention. I think what I was thinking was, um, we all know that we ought to eat better. Everyone knows more fruits and vegetables, whole grains over processed grains. Everyone knows that. But it always comes with, um, you know, why should we do that? Um, so you can reduce your chances of getting chronic illness. I don't know about anyone else, but when I heard reduce your chances, what I heard was you could eat um, you, you could eat less yummy food, you could sacrifice a lot of foods you really like, and you still might get those diseases anyways. And I thought, yeah, I'll try to eat more healthy, but I'm not going to go all out. You know, I don't, I'm not going to get all the promise, so why go all out? But when I heard that this diet could eliminate your chance of getting the most serious forms of heart disease, the biggest killers, that attracted my attention. So that very day, it was a Saturday, I got on the internet and I did more research. I looked at the experts that were quoted, particularly Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, the man that was featured in, in The Last Heart Attack. I looked at his research and it soon became very clear why he was saying that this type of diet could stop heart disease in its tracks. And if you're eating this diet, you're not going to get um, the type of heart disease that builds up to a heart attack. And, and an open heart surgery. And it wasn't just heart disease, it was many other diseases. So I really felt strongly, um, this is, I think this is the way human beings are supposed to be eating. I think I better eat this way. So I hadn't been thinking about my diet. Actually, my life at that time was consumed with something else. I was very concerned about a personal issue I was having that I had to make a very prayerful decision about and it was not related to diet. I didn't have any risk factors for heart disease, but when I heard about this diet and I learned what a tremendous difference can have in our health, I realized that we can avoid much of the chronic disease that we see all around us. You know, I had assumed those things were inevitable. Um, you get old, you're gonna get one of those diseases, so why even worry about it now? I thought I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But when I realized that I could just simply eat differently and avoid most of the major diseases, I thought, this is a no-brainer. I'm going to change my diet. In fact, I changed my diet that very day. My first meal was two pieces of corn on the cob. I didn't put any butter on them. And they were totally delicious. I thought, oh, this is not going to be so hard. Well, that was before dinner time. By dinner time, I didn't have a clue, not a clue what I was going to eat. In fact, for the next six weeks, I really struggled. I'm not a cook. Um, I don't have a family I need to cook for. And uh, I, I don't know where the food just appeared, you know, leftovers or I make a sandwich or whatever. It's easy to get food in our society. It's so easy. I didn't know how to cook. I didn't have a clue how to cook. And I didn't know how to make this food. And pretty soon I realized I was in deep trouble. My food wasn't tasting good. I was not enjoying my diet. I was still very enthusiastic about the diet, but um, the food part was not going well. So that took a little time to develop the skills. It took a little time for my taste buds to change. That's not true for everyone. Some people know how to cook and they make an easy transition. My sister was like that. She knows how to cook 
and for her there was essentially no transition. She just dropped out all the, all the animal foods. She made food, food from scratch already. And if you make food from scratch and you change to this diet, it doesn't take any more time once you, once you learn the basics. But if you don't know how to cook like me, then um, it can be difficult. It was challenging at first, but my taste buds changed. I learned a few recipes. I figured out what works for me. And about seven or eight weeks into it, I realized I was loving my food. And that has not changed until today. I eat my food and every day I think, I am loving my food. I've always loved my food. So at first when it wasn't tasting good, I was thinking, of course, this is not going to work. I'm not going to go the rest of my life not enjoying my food because I love food. But I thought, I'll give it some time. You know, I really believe this is right. I trusted that, um, as I said, that your palate can change. And sure enough, my palate changed and I finally I'm loving the food now. And to me, that's one of the great hidden treasures of the word of wisdom, that we don't have to sacrifice delicious foods for healthy foods, for the foods that the Lord ordained for our body. I didn't really have a lot of health concerns. Yeah, I was overweight. I mean, I've been at least 50 pounds over what I should be. And I'd worked like six or seven years to drop that first 25 pounds. Then after I changed my diet, it was six or seven months and I lost the other 25 pounds. And that was a blessing. You feel better when you're lighter. And I had a few other nagging health issues that I now only in retrospect realize would have grown into even more serious issues. But I had a few other nagging health issues. I had a blocked saliva gland. I had extremely itchy parts of my body. Um, my legs would get really restless and intense. And um, I had a number of other small things like that. And uh, it was a great blessing when I changed my diet that all of the small uh, annoying health issues I had completely went away. You just can't, you can't pay money for that type of blessing. You cannot. Now, other people, they may prefer their donuts more than they prefer good health. I know there are people who prefer donuts or cheeseburgers or pizza over good health. For me, I love my good health. I love my good health. I love feeling good. I love it that when I eat food, I don't feel heavy and weighed down. I feel light and I enjoy my food. I love it that I don't have any health issues, that I'm at a proper weight. I'm probably at the weight now that I was when I graduated from high school. It feels good. But what I wasn't expecting were the spiritual blessings. And that is what has become most profound to me over time. Of course, there's always a joy in doing something that you feel like pleases the Lord. But to me, the spiritual blessings have come um, through feelings of peace, feelings of joy, feelings of comfort, clarity of mind, increased inspiration, revelation. For me, feeling more in tune with the Spirit of the Lord. What could be more precious than feeling more in tune with the Spirit? That's something we all want. I'm not saying that I'm perfect in any way. I'm just comparing my former self with my current self. Now, part of the promises in the Word of Wisdom are hidden treasures, hidden treasures of knowledge and other hidden treasures. I think these are the type of treasures that you can't really communicate well to other people, but you can experience them, and I've certainly experienced them. They're subtle, but they're beautiful, and to me, they're very precious. You know, I love donuts. I love ice cream. I love junk food. I like all kinds of food. And I could eat anything without getting sick before. I'm not one of those people who had to be careful about their diet. I could eat anything, and I loved everything. I love those foods, but I love my health more. And I love these spiritual blessings more. They're more precious to me. Mm -hmm.